Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College, it's June the 5th and we're looking at Nehemiah chapter 1. So we have a new book today, it's the book of the prophet Nehemiah and uh, the big issue is the rebuilding of the walls. But let's come to verse 1. The words of Nehemiah the son of Hachilah and it came to pass in the month of Chislu in the 20th year as I was in Shushan the palace that Hanani one of my brethren came and certain of men of Judah and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped which were left of the captivity and concerning Jerusalem and they said to me the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the providence province are in great affliction and reproach and the wall of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are burned with fire and it came to pass when I heard these words I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven Nehemiah was a sensitive man but what made him particularly sensitive is that he loved Jerusalem and he loved his people and he wanted the city to regain its honour and its prestige again but to hear that it was broken down and to hear that the gates stood there half burnt just broke his heart he sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven now this expression the God of heaven is the way in which the Gentiles always refer to the Jewish God it's called the God of heaven and I said I beseech thee O Lord God of heaven the great and terrible God which keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant which I pray before thee now day and night for the children of Israel thy servants and confess the sins of the children of Israel which we have sinned against thee both I and my father's house have sinned we have dealt very corruptly against thee and have not kept the commandments nor the statutes nor the judgments which thou commandest thy servant Moses so this is the situation these are the old covenant people and they come before the Lord and they say we have not kept the commandments the statutes the judgments which was commanded of the servant Moses this is what righteousness is this is what God under law demanded but they sinned against the Lord they have dealt very corruptly against the Lord he says remember I beseech thee the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses saying if ye transgress I will scatter you abroad among the nations but if you turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost parts of heaven will I yet gather ye from hence and will bring you again into the place that I have chosen to set my name there so this is the situation you see if Israel forsakes the Lord and then the Lord will allow them to be scattered amongst the nations however if if when they're scattered they repent and they turn again unto the Lord their God then he will gather them again back to Jerusalem that's the point now these are thy servants and thy people whom thou hast redeemed by thy great power by thy strong hand so this is the redemption from Egypt they came out by a high hand they came out by the shedding of blood O Lord I beseech thee let thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy servants who desire to fear thy name and prosper I pray thee this thy servant this day and grant him mercy in the sight of this man for I was the king's cupbearer and it came to pass in the month Nisan in the twentieth year of Artaxerxes the king that wine was put before him and I took up the wine and gave it to the king now I had not been aforetime sad in his presence wherefore the king said unto me why is thy countenance sad seeing thou art not sick is there is there nothing else but sorrow of heart 
Then I was sore afraid, and I said to the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad, when the city, the place of my father's sepulchres, lieth waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? And the king said unto me, For, thou do, for what dost thou request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. See, this was a, a quick prayer in the midst of a conversation. This is a man who just pleads with the Lord to give him the right words. I said to the king, If it please the king, and if thy servant has found favour in thy sight, that thou wouldst send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchres, that I may build it. And the king said to me, and the queen also sitting by him, For how long shall thy journey be? And when wilt thou return? So it pleased the king to send me. And I set him a time. Moreover, I said unto the king, If it please the king, um, let letters be given to the governors beyond the river, that they may convey me over till I come into Judah. And a letter unto Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the, pal for the gates of the palace, which appertaineth to the house. And for the wall of the city and for the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted according to the good hand of my God that was upon me. Then I came to the governors beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. When Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the, uh, the Ammonite, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. And then I arose in the night, I and the few men with me, neither told I any man, um, neither, neither told I any man what my God has put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither was there any beast with me, save the beast that I rode upon. And I went out by night, by the gate of the valley, even by the dragon well, and to the dung port, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem which were broken down, and the gates which had been burned with fire. Then I went to the gate of the fountain, and to the king's pool, but there was no place for the beast um, that was under me to pass. Then went I in the night by the brook, and viewed the wall, and turned back, and entered the gate <coughs> Um, of the valley and so returned and the rulers knew not whither I went or what I did neither yet had I told the Jews nor the priests nor the nobles nor the rulers nor the rest that did the work then I said unto them see finally he has to speak you see the distress we are in how Jerusalem lieth waste and the gates thereof have been burned with fire come let us build up the wall of Jerusalem that there be no more reproach then I told them of the hand of God was good upon me, as also the king's words had spoken unto me. And they said, Rise up, let us build, for they strengthened their hands for this good work. Now when Sanballat and Tobiah and, the, and, the, and, and Geshem heard it, they laughed to scorn and despised us. However, verse 20, this is my password for today. I answered them, I said, The God of heaven will prosper us therefore we his servants will arise and build but ye have no portion or right or memorial in Jerusalem what he's saying is that the God of heaven he will prosper us he will prosper us and we will arise and build but when it's done you will have no portion in it and you'll have no rights there and you will have no memorial there even when you're buried you will not be buried in Jerusalem wow then Elisha the high priest rose up with the brethren the priests and they builded the sheep gate and they sanctified it and set up the doors even unto the tower of Meir. They sanctified it unto the tower of Hananiel. And so we have in chapter 3 the complete list of all the work that went on simultaneously. They didn't just start in one spot. They started at every gate. Okay. And they built the wall next to the gate when the gate was built. And so he starts at the uh, at the sheep gate. Then, we, then he talks about the fish gate, and then he talks about the broad wall. Then he talks about the valley gate. Then he talks about 
at the gate of the fountain and you can imagine going around all the gates of the city of Jerusalem and uh, the people were sparse and they went and did the horse gate and finally in the last verse he says going up round the corner unto the sheep gate again so the whole of the wall that was the gates were restored and the wall was built and it came to pass verse 4 that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews why are these feeble Jews they will fortify themselves will they make sacrifice will they make an end of it all in a day will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish which are burned now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him and he said even that which they build he says a fox could break through the wall so it's so shaky even a fox would be able to get up <clears throat> here O our god for we are despised says naked says uh, says uh, says the prophet um and turn our approach upon their head and give them for a prey in the land of captivity cover not their iniquity let not their sin be blotted out from before thee for they have reproached thee provoke thee to anger before the builders now i love verse six so built we the wall and all the wall was joined together unto half thereof for the people had a mind to work <laughs> they finally made a join in the walls they'd only built them halfway up but they had made a join in all the walls and it came to pass when Sambalat, Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped they were very wroth and conspired all of them together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it nevertheless we made our prayer unto God and set a watch against them day and night because of them and Judah said the strength of the bearers of the burdens is decayed there is much rubbish so that we were not able to build the wall and our adversaries said they shall not know neither see till we come in the midst of them and slay them and cause the work to cease um, um, verse 14 be not ye afraid of them remember the Lord who is great and terrible fight for your brethren um, and your sons and your daughters your wives and your houses and it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us that God had brought their counsel to naught and that we returned all of us to the wall every one to, to, to his work half of the servants wrought in the work and the other half held spears and shields and bows and habergeons and the rulers were built and the rulers uh, were built all the house of Judah they which built on the wall and those which bear the burdens and those that laid laid and every one of them with his hands wrought in the work and the other hand held a weapon this is it you see they built they built with a sword in one hand and with a trowel in the other hand um, and uh, and I said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, the work is great and large. And we are separated upon the wall from one another. In what place therefore you hear the sound of a trumpet, resort us thither unto us, for God will fight for us. And uh, they worked so, so, so hard day and night. They worked from the rising of the sun um, until they saw the stars appear in the sky. Wow. And uh, ne so neither I nor my brethren nor my servants nor the men of the guard which follow me, none of us put off our clothes, saving that everyone put them off for washing. You can feel the work. You can feel the tiredness in the men. They worked solid day and night, day and night. And they did this until the wall was built. Well, God bless you. Wonderful to speak to you. Look forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye for now.